Let's construct a second model that builds on our first. The first thing we're going to do is make a copy of this ant1.net logo. Here I can do that by right clicking and saying copy this and then I can do a command V or control V. Okay, so however you in your operating system copy files, you make a copy of that and I'm going to rename it ant 2.n logo. Then I'm going to double click on it to open it and we'll relabel it by right clicking on this label, selecting edit and calling it ant 2. Now that we have an ant that can move around, let's give it something to eat. So let's go to the code tab and um, let's grow some food for the ant. So in the setup procedure, we would write grow food. Okay, but now we have to tell the um, system how to grow food. So we can go down here and write a new procedure to grow food. And what we're going to do is ask patches set p color green. End. So let me explain about patches. If we go over back to the interface, you see here in the world, which is this black area, we can right click and edit. And you see that this shows the coordinate system for the world. It's probably hard to see on your screen, but you can do it in NetLogo and take a look, uh, where the 0, 0 coordinate is in the middle, and then this goes from minus 16 to um, 16 in the horizontal, in the vertical, and minus 16 to 16 in the um, horizontal, and so the whole box is a grid of 33 by 33 squares which are called patches and here's the number of pixels per patch here it's 13 and so on so each patch has um, properties of its own like color if I go back to the code I've now asked all of the patches to set their color p color is the color of a patch to green so let's see what happens when I do setup Indeed, they've all been set to green. So we can take that as a model of an ant living in a world of grass. Now let's go back to the code tab and write some code to have the ants eat the grass. So to do this, we're going to write the following right here. If p color equals green, that is, I'm going to write a little comment here. If the turtle is located on a green patch, so this is asking the turtles to look at their patch, and if the, the patch that they're on, every turtle is on a particular patch, and if its patch is green, then here's what it has to do. It's going to eat the piece of green grass by setting the color back to black. So set p color black. Okay, and then it's going to keep track of how much food it's eaten. So it's going to set food eaten to food eaten plus one. Okay, and then we're going to do one more thing, which is uh, have it wear on its body a label that says that's going to tell us how much food it's eaten. So we're going to say set label food eaten. And notice this is all something that we're going to ask the turtles to do. And I realize I have to put this bracket down here. And I'm going to put tabs I'm going to put tab. Every time I hit a tab, it indents this to where it should go. So now I have a, these two brackets, this one and this one, 
around all the commands we're going to ask the turtles to do. We're going to ask them to turn right or left, go forward for, look at their patch. If the color is green, set the color black, increase the amount of food eaten by one, and wear a label that says how much food the ant has eaten. Okay, now there's one thing left to do, which is this food eaten. We have to set that up. So turtles have to have some kind of variable associated with them called food eaten. You can think of that as the turtle's stomach, which keeps track of how much food is eaten. And the turtles never digest anything in this model. So uh, to, to do that, I'm going to say turtles, turtles own food eaten. And what that does is it sets a variable called food eaten that's specific to each turtle. Each turtle has its own food eaten variable. So every turtle is going to have a different amount of food eaten. Up here in setup, I'm going to um, set that to zero. Set food eaten zero. Okay. So make sure it starts out at zero, and then as we go, it'll each turtle or ant will accumulate the amount of food it's eaten. So let's check this. Looks OK. Go back to the interface. Let's slow it down a little bit so we can watch the turtle eating food. So the turtle is going through, I, I'm sorry, the ant, I should say, is going through the world, moving around, and every time it goes through, uh, it lands on a green patch, it eats the food there. So remember, it's taking, a s taking um, between zero and three steps every time. So it only eats the food after it's done, taking all of its steps. So you see it going around, and we can speed it up a little bit. <laughs> and you can watch the ant going around eating the food. You probably can't see it on your screen, but the ant is showing a label of how much food is eaten. It's a lot of food for one little ant to eat. And the next thing to do is to give our ant a colony. So let's add some more ants. The way to do that is let's add a population. And let's allow the user of our model to set the population size. So I'm going to go up here to the uh, interface menu and go to slider. I'm going to put in a slider. I'm going to call the var global variable population. I'm going to let the minimum population be 1. The maximum be, let's say, 200. We can allow people to increment them by 1. And this gives the initial value 50. That sounds about right. And we'll do apply. OK. Let me move this, select it, and move it up here. But now we have to tell the code what to do with this variable population. So I'm going to go to the Code tab. And instead of Create Turtles 1, I'll say Create Turtles Population. So the user will set the population number. And then the code will create that many turtles. So let's see what happens when we set up. Now we have all our, tur our ants here in the middle, our 50 of them. And let's let them go. So you can see them moving around. I slowed it down. So they're all doing the same thing, but since each has some random choices that it makes, you see them all acting a little bit differently. And if we speed it up, we start to see things that look almost like real ants moving around eating food. Let's, uh, let's try increasing the population. 130 seems like a good number of ants. Ooh, now they're really crowded. OK. Well, they're so crowded, I think we should go in to the code and make them a little smaller. Let's set their size to 1. And let's see what that does. So I'll set up. Now they're much smaller little ants. 
you probably can't see them too well, but they certainly give each other more room. Again, it's too small to see on your screen, but each ant has a label saying how much food it's eaten. One thing we'd like to know is how much food the total colony has eaten. So what I'm going to do is add a plot that shows how over time how much total food is eaten. So we go up again here to the interface builder menu, and I'm going to choose plot. I'm going to put a plot down here, and it's going to ask me for a bunch of things about the plot. I'm going to call it total food eaten. Okay. It's going to take care of um, the minimum and maximum itself. We'll uh, let that adjust by itself. Call the x-axis label total food eaten. The y-axis label is time. And let's call the pen name. The color we'll leave it black. The pen name we'll call uh, total food eaten. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to give a plot command. So here I'm going to tell it to plot. Here's what it plots. The sum of food eaten of turtles. So this says, look at, for each turtle, look at how much food it's eaten, and sum all of that, and then plot that number versus time. Okay, let's apply. Um, oops, I gave the wrong. This should have been the y-axis, total food eaten, and this should be the x-axis, time. Okay, now we're good. All right, so... Let's select this, let's move it, let's make it a little bit taller so we can see, okay, and now let's see if that works. Set up, go. So you can see that the plot is adjusting itself, this number keeps changing. And this shows how fast the food is eaten. And you can actually play with the population size and see how much that affects how fast the food is eaten. To finish off our model, let's uh, let the user set some of the other variables that the ants obey. So, for example, let's have a slider that allows the user to set both the maximum step size and the maximum uh, turn angle. So I'm going to select the plot and move it down to make room for two more sliders. Then I'm going to go up here, select slider, and we have a variable of, uh, uh, let's call it max step size. Um, let's call it, have its minimum be 1, its maximum be 10, its initial value be 4. Okay, let's move this here, and let's select this and move these guys up. And then let's do another slider. called maximum turn angle. Okay, and this would be, let's say, minimum of one degree and maximum of 180. Okay, the initial value of, well, we had 60 in the code. So apply, okay, select, move, Okay, well now we have to put these variables into the code. So here, instead of saying 60 here, let's say max turn angle. And same here, max turn angle. Okay, so now we have right random max turn angle, left random max turn angle. Well, you might notice 
if you're if you've been paying attention that this random statement returns an, uh, an integer between 0 and this minus 1, the max turn angle minus 1. So actually, the max turn angle is a little bit of a misnomer because it really should be the max turn angle um, would be this minus 1. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. OK, and here, I'm going to do the same thing. Instead of 4, I'm going to say max step size. All right, so let's check this code. And by the way, I realize that this code might be hard to see on your screen. I'm uploading it to the course materials page called ant2.nlogo, so you can download it yourself and take a look at it. And you'll actually be using it to do the homework. All right, so now let's see if this works again. OK, so seems to work. Another really handy thing I should tell you about in NetLogo is sometimes NetLogo can get stuck where even if you click the Go button, it doesn't turn off because it's doing so many commands. Uh, up at the Tools, there's a Halt command, which you can use to always stop the program. That always works for stopping the program. And that's just handy in case, for some reason, the program gets hung up and you can't just click Go again. OK, so let's do an experiment. Let's increase the max step size all the way to 10 and see what happens. Well, now a lot more of them seem to be getting stuck at the edges. And you can play around with these different three different variables and see how much, how long it takes for the total food to get eaten. But we'd like it actually to stop when all of the food is eaten, so we can see exactly how many ticks it took for all the food to get eaten. So I'm going to put a command in there to do that. So I go here to the go uh, procedure, and here's the command that you would use to make it stop. You would say, if there's not any patches with patch color, p color equals green, that is, they've all been turned black, then we'll do this, stop. So this is a kind of syntax that NetLogo uses. You can do not, and then you can do any question mark patches with some property, and stop. OK, so let's try all that. Let's set the population all the way to 200 and the step size to 4, turn angle to 60, and let's see how fast these ants can eat all the food. They did it in only 105 ticks. Now let's save our model by going to the File menu and clicking on Save. That's our, the end of our second model.